I try to learn one new thing every day. What I learned today is that when this Sony Digital 8 camcorder says that its battery is low, you'd better get right straight back to the battery charger and plug it in. Otherwise, you're not going to be making a movie for much longer. It's not forgiving like the Panasonic camera, but he who admits to ignoring copious battery warnings and flashing battery symbols gets exactly what he deserves. Now, those of you who have been watching all my latest videos know that I've um, been playing with the night shot on this thing because that feature intrigues me, you know, being able to take video out in complete darkness. But the night shot system was deliberately detuned by Sony, mainly by making it impossible to adjust the exposure in other settings so that if you tried to engage night shot during the day, it would uh, show everything uh, as, as an overexposed image because the exposure controls were disabled and you couldn't do anything with them. Well, I don't want to use it for any illegitimate purpose at all. I just want to go out and take pictures at night. And the night shot illuminator on the camera, there's a couple of infrared LEDs on it, are not very bright. And so that brings into play this little thing. This little thing is actually part of a bigger hole. This is something that came from my place of work. It's a security camera with a, with a night vision infrared light boosting feature, which is the function of all these LEDs here on the front. And as you can see, they are some monster LEDs. I don't know what the uh, power rating for these is, but I wouldn't be surprised if these were all 1 watt LEDs right here, and then there's these smaller ones over here. They do get fairly warm in operation. So where's the camera? Well, that's an interesting thing. This, uh, this was the victim of an unfortunate accident. This thing wants 12 volt DC power. And unfortunately, most security cameras that people buy run on 24 volts AC. So we had a centralized power box that provided power to all the other cameras. And the first guy who tried to set this up, he hooked this camera up to the 24 volt AC power connection, which proved not to be a good idea. Now, I, I think this thing has got some circuit protection on it to protect against outright stupidity like that. But then another guy came along and tried to set it up the same way without looking at the printing here on the back that very clearly says DC 12 volt in. Oops. You can see it right there. And he hooked it up, and that time around, one of the positive thermal coefficient thermistors in the... Uh, <laughs> in the uh, power box for the 24 volt AC stuff actually cut the circuit with a pretty loud pop and that was bad news. But the camera did not survive. This infrared illuminator assembly though seems to be much more robust or maybe it's just simple enough that uh, we got lucky and it wasn't damaged. But this is part of a camera that was uh, billed as having the ability to see some 492 feet in total darkness. So I went ahead and hooked this thing up the other night just to see what I could do with this thing. It seemed too good to throw away. I thought I might do something with this, but I didn't know what until now. What I'm going to do with this, I've got the connection made already. I'm going to give Nightshot a little bit of a boost so it can see much, much better in pitch blackness with this thing helping it out. Should be an incredible light show. <laughs> But I've got a battery connection here to go to a 12 volt pack. Then I'm going to go over to the Roach Palace here and get. I actually bought some rechargeable batteries for this purpose, but I haven't received them yet. So right now I'm going to use some alkalines. Now that's not a nice thing to do to alkaline batteries. They say that this thing's power consumption is around 10 watts. And by doing the math, I came up with around an 800 milliamp uh, consumption figure. And I don't know, with all those big LEDs there on the front, I can't see how it uses so little power. But I haven't tried to put an ammeter or anything in line with it to see exactly how much power it's consuming. But I know that when it's in operation, not only does this little fan come on, which when the camera is in its normal position, this little fan is completely blocked off. It can't move any air at all, which is a silly thing to do. But this board back here with the uh, voltage regulators on it and stuff also gets very, very hot. So let me go over to the Roach Palace and get the battery pack, test this thing out. I have completely stripped the camera electronics out of this thing, leaving only the uh, light boosting assembly behind. Fortunately, it seems more than willing to operate with just the light booster assembly left behind. There is this photo cell back here, but with the camera circuitry gone, it seems like the light boosting function runs all the time.
Now under normal circumstances, most cameras have got an infrared blocking filter that keeps them from seeing much IR light. And to our eyes, this is pretty much what it's going to look like. Just a sort of faint red glow, which you might be able to see a little bit better. No, it's a blue glow. But it's still very, very faint. To us, it's just on the edge of our vision. But when you flip on the night shot switch on this camera, a filter is physically moved out of the way, allowing the image sensor to see much more light than it normally can, and in particular, infrared light. So let's take this thing outside and see what it'll do. Check that out. That's the illumination from that infrared device. Which if I turn around here, now with the night shot mode on, and I look at that thing, it's glowing like a house of fire. It actually glows brighter when I run it from a car battery because it's probably pull enough current out of those alkaline batteries that's pulling down their voltage rather significantly and therefore dropping their brightness as well. Last night when I was playing with this with the Zar furhead around, it was so bright you couldn't even make out the individual LEDs through the camera's own viewfinder. But that's still pretty impressive and it certainly gives the night shot feature a much needed boost. I can move that around just like it was a spotlight. But it's not totally dark out here. The street light's on over there. So let's see if I see what happens if I go somewhere where it's totally dark. Let me see. All right, folks. There it is. <laughs> you don't need a light, bud. <laughs> that thing is amazing. <laughs> Pretty kicking, isn't it? Let me see. Out here at the farm. There's the roof rafters. Wow, that leaf throws the light around. It'd do even better. It's uh, presently really beating the snot out of these AA batteries. Look at that. We've got a strange agent on the tractor. Yeah, that certainly lights things up quite a bit better than the stock illumination. I don't think we're going to get 400 feet out of it. But that's not too shabby. I don't know. Probably about 100 feet down to the other end of the shed there, whatever that, I think that's the planter, yep. Of course, I can't see a thing in here. The camera can, but I have to be careful because its perception of things is different than mine. Okay, now I'm shooting with a hybridized approach. I was like, hey dummy, camera's got a light on it that works for my vision, so we'll just combine that with the, uh, with the night shot. There's the old farm hall. There might be some pretty cool wildlife you could catch unaware with this thing. Unbelievable. It's a 92 degree day today, and I'd tell you right now it'd be hard pressed if it was 65 degrees out here. All of a sudden the temperature just fell off. Of course, we're supposed to have severe storms tonight. But there you have it, folks. More goofing around with night shot with the help of an external illumination device. Sweet!